Hey guys, Jim again with the Tradesman Channel. Um, we are finally going to get back to the barn, and I am excited. I can't tell you how excited I am to be finally getting back to this project. Uh, weather's been crappy, you know. It's starting to turn around. We're heading towards the end of March, you know. It, uh, so up here in far upstate New York, it uh, it's getting nicer out. So tonight we're going to be discussing how to do a timber framing knee brace. Uh, this is one of those things that's real important so if you're planning to do one of these projects you know this is one you may want to pay attention to. Um, a lot of your building is going to rely on these knee braces to really uh, this is what keeps everything from racking, keeps everything square so they're really not that hard to cut. They're not that hard to figure out. It's like anything else. Once you understand a little bit about the basics of doing them, you'll be able to rip these off. You, you'll do them fast. So, anyhow, I'm going to do it a little different tonight. Um, I'm filming the intro after I've done the work, so we'll see how that goes. You're going to see in one point where uh, I look like a total, total amateur handling that uh, saw I had piece that was too long. These are uh, A lot of these are sapwood from the outer layers of the logs so sometimes they don't like to cut with a handsaw when you got to finish a cut off but whatever you know it's all good we all mess up but I'll leave it in there because I'm certainly not perfect so anyhow hope you guys enjoy the process and uh, we'll get started. All right, so we're going to lay out. We're going to lay out the first brace. I have four to cut, and when you find yourself having a uh, having a bunch of pieces to cut, it's it's always a good idea to to cut them all at once. You know, get a process going. It'll make everything a lot faster. I made the mistake of going uh, piecemeal quite a bit with this, and I shouldn't have, but my mistake. Live and learn. Um, so anyhow, just like any part of your frame process. When you're selecting your material for your braces, for me, I was trying to get away from large knots and things like that in them. I mean, some knots aren't going to hurt anything, but these braces perform an extremely important job inside the frame. This, These are what's going to keep everything square for you. These are what's going to resist your wind loads, your racking, things like that. When you lay braces out, you always put a you put them opposing each other so if the wind's hitting one way one you know it's basically so the braces counteract each other uh, no matter what so if uh, you got a wind load pushing on one side of the building the brace on the opposite side of the building will help keep it from racking I'm kind of of the opinion you can't have too many braces I mean I pretty much have braces all over the place so but remember in a timber frame you're not relying on sheathing to hold your structure together you're you're going to be relying on these braces to do the job so anyhow I said in a previous video on your framing square that you can find a lot of the information that you need on the square to figure a whole lot of different things out uh, how this pertains to your brace layout is here on the tongue of the framing square that's this part and this is the tongue this is the body on the tongue you have a set of numbers here all right, so this is the size we're going with. We're going with a 36 inch by 36 inch layout. So, and I'll get into that when I lay out braces on the beams. But for right now, I'm going with a three by three layout. So you have the the two numbers right there. All right. Next to it, you have this 50 with the 91 above it a little bit. That's 50.91 inches is the length of that brace. That ends up being 50 and 15 sixteenths when you convert it from the uh, 0.91 to to, uh, to a fraction. So, so if these are going to be 50 and 15 sixteenths inches long, we got a little figuring to do here. So just like any other any other member you're framing, See how square everything is? It's right on the money. I like that. 
it's right on. Check it in a few different spots because if you got off in your saw milling, like right there in the middle, that's off a little bit right near that knot. I probably had a blade was probably a little dull that day. But she's off just a little bit right there. So come down a little farther. I know I'm out of the camera. But for the most part, that's pretty good there on that side. And that's right on the money. So, anyhow. All these joints are getting put into a uh, half inch housing. So these aren't going to be set right up. Uh, these aren't going to be set right up. They're going to be recessed into the uh, the wall posts and the tie beams. So you have to account for that when you're cutting this brace. In order to account for that housing, I'm going to take my handy dandy framing and my speed square. All right, good sharp pencil. Number one rule. So I'm going to measure three eighths inches up on this. Okay. So that 3 8 inches there, my measurement of 50 and 9 16 inches, I'm going to go from this point here. But first I'm going to lay out this end of the brace. So I'm going to take my 45, and I'll move the camera a little closer for you guys. Sorry the lighting in here is not the greatest. First time I've tried filming and zooming with this thing. Poor wife's camera. Getting all covered in sawdust. It's probably going to kill me later. I think we can see that, right? I think so. Okay. So if you see right here, I measured up my 3 eighths of an inch. And that's important because if you're recessing these into a half inch housing, which is the standard housing, depth for a brace. This is going to be recessed in a half an inch. Now, if I were to just cut this flat, or cut it right here at the edge, and lay it out from that measurement, this brace would end up being too short to go into that, into that half inch housing. So you have to move it up a little bit. And this part right here, underneath this mark, is going to sit inside the housing. The rest of it is going to sit inside the mortise. So we're going to lay this out. Make a mark this way. And get one here. So now you have the basic footprint of that brace. All right. I like to do a three inch long tenon on these. You guys could do a little longer if you'd like. Personally, I would not go any less than three inches. You want to make sure you have enough relish if this ends up getting a uh, tension load on it, meaning a load that's pulling this away from the mortise, you want to make sure you have enough relish in there that the peg's not just going to split out the end of it. So three inches is about the minimum. So I measure... Too much coffee today. I'm shaking like a damn leaf. The on-call phone started ringing at 2 o'clock this morning. And to go to a convent that had a gas leak at 2 o'clock this morning. Got home about 4.30, so that's the nature of the on-call week. Always busy. So I've got my 3-inch mark there. And that 3-inch mark is up from this line right here. Alright. Alright, so now I know where to go with that. Alright, now... I'm going to measure my uh, 50 and 15 sixteenths for the length of this. Remember we found that on the, uh, the tongue of our framing square. Make sure you go where those two lines intersect. A turkey call clamp has been entertaining. Okay. So 
We're going 50 and 15 sixteenths, but I'm starting at the 10 inch mark. Let's double check. Turn the camera, show you guys more of my mess. I can do this without knocking it over. I'm bound and determined I'm going to break this camera on her. Like I said, then I'm a dead man. I've really got to get used to this filming and working. It's a little different animal. Make sure you're laying these out if you have any of the fuzzies from your sawmill on the corners of your boards. And I seem to get it a lot when uh, I'm getting into sap wood. Get them off of there. This, that speed square has got to set up there nice and square, nice and tight to the what you're working with. We're going to lay this out on the opposite of the other one. And I really got to learn how to move the camera. Come on, you guys are supposed to be uh, telling me what I should be doing here. It's ridiculous. Can't find good subscribers anymore. You can't have nothing. Alright. I'll measure up my 3 8 This way. And that way. Zero for three inches. Left-handed. I hate when I have to use my right hand to lay something out. There it is. So from this point here to the same point on the other side should be 50 and 15 sixteenths. And what that'll make sure that happens with that being up is three eighths of an inch. That's going to make sure that that lands tight inside that housing. And what I kind of like about using a housing. I know it's only a half an inch of surface bearing area, but it's uh, there, right on half inch on that line of the 45. I know it's only half an inch for bearing area, but that's just extra bearing area. You gotta remember your braces, they're working in compression, so they're gonna be actually squeezed in between your wall post and your tie beam, if, tie beam if that makes any sense. So when you get a load racking against it, the beams are going to push against this brace. That's going to make it that much more rigid. Now you can go, this is a standard brace size. I mean there's a 4x6 uh, a is one of the standard ones. You can go 4x4, four 4x8, four, four you know, kind of whatever your heart desires but don't undersize them. This is probably, for the size of the beams I'm using, this is probably would be the smallest brace that I would use. So anyhow, I'm going to lay out the last one I have and then we will uh, we'll get to cutting them.
this. And get the camera off of here. Okay, there we have it. There's our brace all cut. When I go to put the uh, next bent together, I'll show you guys how I lay these out. So you see how we have that, that shoulder right there? That's what's going to sit. That's the uh, going to sit in the bottom of the housing. So there it is. All right. So that was our uh, that was our brace layout there. If uh, you guys have any questions on doing this, uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Don't overcomplicate it. Just uh, I said stick to simple. If you're new to doing this like I am, stick to simple. And it'll make it a lot easier for you. The, uh, they're not too hard to figure out if you go to theforestreform.com. I know I reference them a lot with this uh, barn build, but they really have awesome information on there. Really good resources to help you build this stuff. And there is a, another thread on there by Jim Rogers, the famous Jim Rogers. You're going to hear a lot about him on this channel um, just because he's so good at what he does. He has a thread on there, uh, brace layout questions and answers. So anyhow, you guys have a good night. If uh, you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you feel like doing, and I appreciate it. You guys have a good evening.